Now, at this point, um, I want to introduce logarithms. Now, this may be something that you've already met before and know all about, in which case you can skip this video. Um, but if it is something that you haven't done before, you're going to need to work through this video and see kind of how they work in order to progress onto the next bit of linear laws. So, we should be fully aware of how we write things in um, exponential notation. So, for example, y is equal to uh, b to the x. This is an exponential equation, okay? But, in a lot of cases, exponential equations are quite difficult to work with. And what really we would like is a way of being able to write this in a simpler way. And that is where logarithmic notation comes in. And we say that if y is equal to b to the x, then x is equal to the logarithm of base b of y. Now, this may not seem like it's simplifying the problem whatsoever, because it's throwing in a whole new kettle of fish, these logarithms. Now, back in the day, um, it was a case of there were log tables. So there was a whole booklet of log tables that you could use, and they were all contained there. So that was there for use. Today, we have calculators that can plug this in. So, the reason why we're thinking about this is that if I was saying, well, what value of x do I need to raise 2 to the power of to make, uh, let's say, 5? So, 2 to the what makes 5, in other words. Now, I know that 2 squared is 4, so that's close to 5, and 2 cubed is 8. So it's between 2 to the power of 2 and 2 to the power of 3. But only with trial and error am I actually going to work out what that value is. So I can try 2.5, 2 to the power of 2.5, or 2 to the power of 2.4, or 2 to the power of 2.3, and so on. There's no exact way of doing it, unless I have the log tables on my calculator... So if I can write y is equal to b to the x is x equals log base b of y, then that means that x, in this case, is equal to log. Notice how b goes there, so that is log base 2. We call that the base of 5. That's my y value. So on a Casio, for example, the log button, one of the newer Casios, we're looking at the top right-hand button, and it looks like this, log with a shaded in square and an open square, like that. Other calculators will have similar functions. So we can go log base 2 of 5, press equals, and we get 2.32192809.5. And that will keep going. And what that means is that 2 to the power of that would be equal to 5. So I said that we would do it through trial and error. We'd try 2.5, we'd try 2.4, we'd try 2.3. We'd find that 2.3 and 2.4 are going to be the closest values, then we'd try 2.35 and so on. The trial and improvement method um, would take too long. This gives me an accurate answer very, very, very quickly. So I can use logarithms to solve simple equations like these. Now, what comes with logarithms is that there's a few laws that will help me uh, solve many other problems. So, what you're going to be used to is that in exponential notation, if you had, um, let's say, b to the p times b to the q, then you know that that's b to the p plus q. Okay? That's one of the index laws. 
and also that b to the p divided by b to the q would be b to the p minus q. And you would also should know that b to the p to the power of q is b to the p q. These are the three index laws um, which you should already know. Now, alongside these are the logarithmic laws, or the log laws. And they go like this. They say, well, if you have two logarithms of the same base, and you're adding them together, then that's the logarithm of the same base of P times Q. So notice how we've got this time symbol and it becomes an add. And we have an add symbol that becomes a times. The exponential and the logarithm are inverses of one another. So what this means is that if you have log of 2, 5 plus log of 2, 3, well that's log of 2 of 15. The 5 and the 3 can get multiplied together. So in a similar way, log base b of p take away log base b of q is log base b, same base, of p divided by q. So, for example, if you've got log base 2 of 30 and you're taking away log base 2 of 6, then this is log base 2 of 30 divided by 6, so 5. So you can see that this has direct relation to this second index law that I had there. This is a subtraction, then a division. That's a division, then a subtraction. Then finally, the third log law says that if you've got P log of base B of Q, then this is the same as log base b of q to the p. So the p, in other words, in front of the logarithm, can be brought up to the power, and vice versa. So, for example, if you had 2 log 3 of 3, for example, then that is the same as log... No, I'll, I'll choose another number here. I'll choose 4. That would be log base 3 of 4 squared. So log base 3 of 16. So these things are exactly the same. And this relates directly to this index law here. So these are the log laws. And this has been a very, very brief introduction to logarithms. But you need to have this stuff under your belt first before you continue with reducing to linear laws using the log laws. Okay? So, if you want more stuff on logarithms, you really need to go back and look at core 2, because that's where it is introduced for AQA.